Hello, um, welcome to our virtual learning event. So um, you may be viewing this live, and if so, please um, put any comments or questions um, as you wish um, in that comment box, and we'll pick up as many um, as possible. Or if you are watching um, this later, and you have some questions that we haven't covered, do just email us on the email addresses going around the bottom of the video now. So, first of all, welcome. Um, my name's Amy Mumby. I'm the academic lead for work-based distance learning. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the opportunities and work-based distance learning in general this evening. So I'm gonna pass over to Eric to introduce himself first. Oh, Eric, you're on mute. Oh, am I on mute? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, perfect. Uh, my name is Eric Tebe. I, I live in South Africa. Um, I'm a student representative and I've uh, been blessed with an opportunity to talk my story and share my experience with Lincoln University. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Tim Collett. I'm a senior lecturer here at the University of Lincoln. Uh, I've been doing it for almost uh, 10 years now and uh, love every bit of it. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be impressed with what we've uh, we've got to offer. But please, there's no silly questions. Just ask away. And uh, especially on the leadership side, I can certainly get back to you with uh, with my thoughts on that. So we'll speak to you later. Hi, my name's Tony Smith. I'm the programme lead for engineering management. Hi everybody, my name is Fiona McManus. I'm one of the lecturers in workplace distance learning um, and I tend to my specialist areas academic writing and study skills. So welcome to this evening. Wonderful. So we have a, a few preset questions um, to get started and then hopefully we'll have some live questions to come to. So if we just wait for our first question to come there. So first one here. So uh, what is a work-based distance learner? So um, as you may already realise, this isn't a traditional on-campus, face-to-face, full-time um, degree programme um, that we're offering. Um, it is part-time and it is aimed at those in work. So I'd like to pass over to um, Tony Smith as one of our programme leaders um, to talk about what is um, a work-based distance learner and then pass over to Eric as one of our students so he can give his view of what a work-based distance learner is. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, um, I'm part of the success story of uh, work-based distance learning. I, I was a student uh, in 2012, and I did this degree alongside working full-time as well. So I've seen both sides of it from both a student and a tutor perspective as well. So if you're looking to gain those higher education sort of degree awards and move further up this is the ideal opportunity it allows you to work towards a set schedule you have submission points you know exactly what you're working towards you've got that one-to-one -one sort of contact with your tutors as well and everything we do is connected to your own working environment so all the assignments will have some sort of relevance to you and you'll be able to help develop your academic skills as you move through the whole of the programme. So that's what I essentially see as a work-based distance learner. You're in full-time employment, but you're also looking to study and gain that professional development yourself. Eric. I couldn't describe it any better. Um, I think you captured a lot of words that I would have loved to capture as a student, but I think the best, the best of the story is you actually are uh, saying something that probably I'm going through as a student, right? And I'm working currently. Um, the best experience is that all of us come into Lincoln for different reasons. Uh, my reasons was purely because I wanted to capture, um, to be qualified, but also to also learn. Um, there is vast amount of knowledge and a lot of people within Lincoln that you can leverage from that and actually discuss some of the leadership or, okay, um, you can even use some, some of the practical things that you are actually using from your own current job, your own life, your own approach in how you do your assignments, how you engage with people, your tutors. They are there um, through bad and the worst, through good and happiness, they're always there. 
Um, and one thing I, I, I really, really appreciate about LinkedIn is that they take you through that process. And I think thoroughly what I've reflected upon in every exercise or opportunity that I was sharing um, was to reflect and um, you know enjoy the journey and the process. And that's what I could tell everybody that's coming in as a student, whether you're working, you will enjoy the journey. And absolutely, when you look back, you'll ponder and say, I did it and beat yourself in the chest. Wonderful, thank you both. Um, and then we're just gonna move over to our next question now. So um, this is um, what will be expected um, of you. So there's a little bit of um, myths that we'd like to look at in between this um, as well. So. In terms of expectations, you are going to be in work. You will um, have um, other commitments as well. And we are flexible. But while we are flexible, we do also have deadlines because, you know, we also expect you to complete the degree. So I'd like to um, pass over um, to Fiona, who looks after a lot of our students starting on their med, uh, module ones, be that at level four, five, or six. Um, so Fiona, what, what do you expect of your students as they get started? Uh, so thank you, Amy. So what I would expect, and, and this is at the beginning of the degree, and these are the things you will take through, I would like people to be proactive in keeping in touch with me in uh, working with me as well as with whatever module that we're looking at, whether that be level four, five or six. So as we progress through a module and it's very structured, there's engagement with the learning resources, engagement with me, how's it going, with the live online sessions that we do, we have two or three per module, and also that building of a learning community. So so working with you know, your, your, your online classmates also creating knowledge. But for me, one of the most important things is the engagement of being proactive. So coming in, looking at what is required, talking to the tutor, any questions at all, bringing them to the forefront straight away. And enjoying the challenges, you start off with, with a lot of support, but we're always there to put in support and answer questions. And then as you move forward, and we start to slowly remove little bits of scaffolding that you continue to work very closely with us so you get the best out of your learning journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fiona. Um, I just want to go over um, to Tim now. So Tim, you look after um, our module two, um, our leadership module that sits across the whole management suite um, at level six. Um, do you mind, because obviously we don't have live assessments, we don't have exams, that's part of that flexibility. So for your module, what do you expect students to produce and how will they submit that? Okay, Amy, thank you for that. Yes, uh, the ILME is a really, really good and up-to-date um, present um, module and uh, it's, it is really, really um, sort of up to, up to date and your students really look forward to it i know you'll say i must say that anyway but no they do it might take a little bit of time but what we what we expect the students to do is to think about leadership and management and sort of di take them apart a little bit really and make and see what's underneath of it and then we, we were we would ask them to do to create a um a, sorry to, to create their aspect of what we're talking about and it's all about leadership and, and leadership and management and everybody knows about that but we take it a little bit further okay we take the bones out of it but what i don't want you to think is is it's not difficult okay because as amy has said and, and tony has we are there to help you and we are experts in our in our own right so this one is a real foundation okay and if you can get this one right which you will because we have some fantastic tutors it really sets you up for the rest of the, the module so it's a really nice neat little uh, parcel that you can unwrap and then wrap back up again in your own own way okay so, so it's really really useful and you will, i'm sure you'll really enjoy it so uh, other than that unless you have any questions I really enjoy it and it's, it's there, to, there to stay. 
Thank you for that tip. If you do have any questions, do pop them through to us and we will pick those up. We have got some starting um, to come through. But just to pick up this expectations a little bit further, um, I'd like to get to Tony and then to Eric. So first, Tony, um, again, thinking of this flexibility and, um, and making work-based assistance learning work for students, what do you expect of students as a programme leader and what do successfully completing students um, what do they do? So I think key element um, for an expectation uh, probably resides with the applicant or the student who's on programme with us. You've got to dedicate time. I think the key element about anything to do with further study is accept that you're going to need to sort of factor in some sort of time management of it as well. And I think that's the fundamental thing that... Um, people generally find a, a bit of an issue. So for instance, using my experience, I, I, I probably stopped reading fictional books during that process to then dedicate that sort of time towards academic study. For others, it might be watching sport, it might be watching films, or it could be that you reduce certain other elements. So again, it's Roughly anyone who's on our program is going to hopefully complete in around about 18 months. So that's 18 months of maybe some form of little sacrifice. But the expectation is you do that and hopefully you'll reach end of program and, and do what Eric suggests. It's it's I did that. And I think there's nothing better than understanding throughout the whole of the academic journey. We as tutors give you guidance but it's essentially you that does the work. So for me, we expect a little from you, but also you want guidance and support from us. And I think we, we balance that very well at the University of Lincoln. Thanks, Amy. Wonderful, thank you. And um, we've got a question come through here, especially um, for um, Eric about which program he's undertaking. Um, Eric, do you mind, sharing which program you're undertaking and just saying a little bit about the expectations of you found from your point of view so um i'm, I'm currently enrolled for the honorary degree in uh, um, uh, business management um these courses that i did that i quite like which was critical uh, analysis and i use that constantly and i think that is one of the major thing that um as a young person, you will definitely be reading because there's a lot of information, but you need to start qualifying and asking the question of why. Um, and why am I using the question of why is because I think a lot of us are sleepwalking, right? And there's a lot of information that's right in your face. And if you're not questioning it with different type of orders, um, the information flow in terms of learning and unlearning some of the bad habits or probably not bad habits, but some of the things that you might have landed wrong. It's it's a purpose of you, you making sure that you can critically anal, uh, analyze somebody's content and make sure that you're absorbing the knowledge uh, much clearer. So for me, critical course that I did was such an enlightening course. It really did um, a justice in terms of how I learned and how I read and what content I need to feed my soul, how do I need to read and what type of things that I would encourage some of the young people that are coming in to really put themselves um, to really, you know, do that knowledge gap and focus on the studies that you are doing because the flexibility that they are offering you from the school, it says that you need to focus on set some level of reading and that reading has to be very accurate in how you're going to be doing your whole entire process, how you're going to go through, um, how you support somebody's thesis or somebody's information and taking that and making it your own and really qualifying that across so for me that has been an experience and i can assure you um whatever that you thought you knew um lincoln can really break barriers <laughs> barriers and really teach you something new um for you uh that is out there that's really looking to come into linkedin um you're definitely gonna um find it very very um i can say it will be hard at first but and if you understand the process and what they're trying to get to teach you it will be much easier because now you'll be able to 
to really grasp certain content and really utilize some of the content and the tools that you may use on your everyday life. Lovely. Thank you uh, for that, Eric. Um, so we've got um, a question here, um, which I'm going to say is um, most likely for Tony. We've got somebody who's already completed um, an advanced apprenticeship in engineering. Um, so Tony is our program lead um, for engineering management. Would you pick up on the engineering um, element here in terms of would they be able to come onto your program? Yeah, I think the good uh, aspect there is the HNC. So that's um, a level four recognized. So at the minute, you're probably slightly under our requirement to join a level six. But again, there's other options that are available. So for instance, you could have professional body membership. So if you've got Eng Tech, for instance, and you've got technical member status or member status of the IET or something similar that would elevate the HNC into sort of the level five. So those two combined would allow you entry onto the top of degree. All right. However, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't alleviate any modules. It would allow you then entry onto that level six. All right. I think uh, what was else was there? Oh, the apprenticeship levy wouldn't be part of this format as well. It's a totally different aspect. And I think that's more to do with our um, CMDA program, our chartered management sort of um, approach there to our apprenticeship. So it's, it's understandable that you probably got that sad face next to your comment thing about not being for. But again, there are students out there that also are sponsored by their organizations as well. So again, there's a whole option of choices. Maybe for some, it's not, you know, it's maybe worth reaching out to supervisors and HR to see whether or not you qualify. I hope that helps, Amy. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, so um, as, as Tony said that, you know, for those who aren't aware, to achieve a full degree, you need to complete three levels of study, um, which is 360 credits. Um, as we're saying that you may have already completed some of those levels already. You may already have equivalency. So a big thing of what we do is to start you at the level that you require to. So if you haven't done any HE study, you'd start at level four on the foundation degree. If you've done some, so for example, if you've got the HNC, but you don't have anything else with it, you could start at level five. If you have a HND, then you could start at level six. You do have to evidence currency though. So, you know, make sure you've got some CPD in there um, and professional body membership is always a good way to go. Ultimately, what we really do say is, is just ask. If you send your CV um, and just speculatively inquire, you know, say, if I was to start with the University of Lincoln, where could I start and what could I do? So, because of course, for Tony's, you need to have an engineering background. Business management is much more generalized. We also have HRM and we also have logistics management. So, please just get any queries or problems, please just get in touch. Um, oh, so. Um, just to pick up though on the experience, so um, CMI professional body membership and 17 years of management experience in engineering, um, that would most likely count. So what would say is if you want to send in a CV and each program leader for each of the program reviews those CVs um, to identify um, whether you would be eligible or not. And just to give you those pathways and the, the best way to your honours degree. Okay. Um, so we've got a question. Oh, thank you. Emily's in the background just for the application and deadline um, across um, for you. Um, so, um, oh, that is um, a shame about not quite finishing your um, HND, a question there. Um, even if you haven't completed your HND, you might have level five credit. So do dig out that transcript and send it across with a CV for checking. Um, so, just here now, so why choose um, a work-based distance degree with the University of Lincoln? So I'm going to ask if we can start with um, Fiona um, here. Um, Fiona, and then if we can go um, to Eric. So um, Fiona, you've got a huge range um, of experience um, of 
different educational environments. Mm. Um, what do you think is different about work places as learning in the University of Lincoln? Um, what I what I think is particularly stands out is uh, quite often with with perhaps a more traditional degree when you're a full time student and not working is often the focus is purely on the theory of whatever subject you're doing, and for me that's what's so amazing about the workplace distance learning degrees. What makes them perhaps stand out and be quite different is. Yes, you're working full time and you are going to learn you know, those academic concepts and things, but you apply it to your workplace. So your workplace and your experience, all of that comes together. So what you're learning and applying, you can actually take it away and use it, which I think is a, for me is a major difference. The thing that I do also think stands out that, that is particularly useful is because of the way we... Um, share our materials the way we teach you etc there's no constraint by your geographical location everything you need is in place we're here for you anything that we do which is perhaps a live online session we record it so there is there is really no limitations in terms of where you are or perhaps even the time zones and things you are able to access things you're able to do your studies we set out the schedule and you can then make it work for yourself within you know the dates that you have so for me those, those two things are particularly um, unique about the programs that we offer so it just means that you're working and studying and gaining all that benefit all at the same time regardless of your location okay thanks very much wonderful thank you um for that fiona um just so want to say um hi to chris jones there um in the comment section and we've got a more specific um question come here um from oh sorry i can't quite see your name there um ola Khan, um i think this one's for you um tony um obviously we can't really give specific questions and just while tony's answering this um chris gallagher do you mind if you are happy to do you mind sharing your current rank over to you tony yeah, I'm just bringing up the question set myself. Uh, I'm Nigeria, I'd HND in oil and gas. Uh, what level would I come in at? Yeah, um, a HND national normally comes across as a level five qualification, so that would allow you to come directly onto the course. We've also got a section we call international as well, and international are there to basically verify that applicants and uh, hopefully students of uh, the University of Lincoln are all going through the same sort of process to make sure that every, everything's uh, legitimate. So uh, we've had many students from Nigeria, so I should imagine the HND would be enough for you to gain entry onto the course. Wonderful. Thank you, Tony. And a similar question um, here from Chris. Oh, who? congratulations, potential Chief Tech. So um, another HND there. Um, so certainly doesn't have to do 360 credits and I'm a key, so certainly engineering. Yeah, um, any, anything to do with um, sergeant rank and above, you, you've normally got two years uh, of substantive to attain at like a city and guilds level five uh, affiliate ship sort of award. So anyone who's done two years in rank at the rank of sergeant and above normally qualifies for the course as well. So we have a quite a substantial amount of military personnel on our program. Um, Amex shows Tim as well. So yeah, I would I would instantly start looking to apply. Your application would go through. Uh, level five, yeah, definitely would be fine for you. And uh, it's the ideal entry point. What what it essentially equates to is like a foundation degree. So you've done levels four and five. That is the foundation element. And then we build on that, take you a little bit further. As Eric has indicated, it's all about developing that critical analysis aspect. And that's what you'll do on the level six. All right. And so so that'll be one of the processes that you'll go through. But for me, as program lead of engineering, I'd say that, yeah, definitely, Chris, you're in the frame for it for sure. Thanks, Amy. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Um, so 
Oh, so I'm just checking through these questions here. They're moving through. So um, hi there to Simon. Um, please keep these comments coming. It's lovely to be able to answer your specific questions. Um, so we've got a question here from Chris um, Jones. It looks like you've got a few options. He's got an FD in engineering in marine um, engineering. He's got deployment level five with CMI. Um, currently applying for work base and they're waiting professional for ING. 16 years in the Navy. Uh, where would he expect to come out at? Uh, the FDN is exactly the same level as um, uh, completing, a, you know, an FD. So it's for us that's level five uh, as a minimum, and the level five with the CMI, excuse me a minute, <clears throat> is again adds further credibility to that uh, already existing um, qualification that you hold. It's in an engineering topic. So for me, again, as program lead, you're pretty much um, guaranteed a place on the course should you choose to accept. Uh, and that's regardless of ING. ING is, is basically an additional add-on as well. I think what is an important element is that we would not be part of a CNG ING element. So we are defined as engineering management. So it might assist you for any future applications however it's not directly linked to that particular engineering authority and professional body all right but of course if they were to take the engineering management they'd come out as chartered managers um with this being a business school which is always nice to have i've got a shoehorn um that in there and uh, we've got um, a nice um question here about um time frames um is it 18 months or 24 because it's 18 to 24 for those of you who are eagle-eyed um, i'm going to pass um to fiona um here um just give tony a little break um fiona You've had students who have completed in 18 months um, and 24. Can you explain a little bit about what the difference is? So for students um, completing in 18 months, if you take your modules one after the other, um, everything's running through on time. Perhaps you don't have extensions or uh, any breaks in your learning that you arrange. Um, then you know you're looking at the, the the fastest way possible to go through. Our modules run usually to set ten weeks. But if you if you you know if 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 challenges come up in life, which is something that we're very aware of, especially because you're working full time, and you do perhaps need an extension or you need to pause your studies, then that will take you, you know, obviously your degree um, a little bit longer. Thanks very much. Wonderful. Thank you, um, Fiona. Um, in addition to that active study time, you do actually have um, interruption time as well. Um, Tim, can you give any general examples of students using um, interruption? Oh, Tim, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, talking about uh, interruptions. Um, interruptions are, as, as Tony and, and uh, Amy have talked about, it is there for you and, and you will use them probably. Um, it's nothing about you can't be doing, doing it, you can't do it. It's about balancing the lifestyle you've got with with work and with home uh, and everything else that's going on and it's a it's a great way of just decompressing as well at some times you just might have to just want to have a break okay and we will look at that uh, and think and have a bit of a guidance first but actually that's a really nice thing to be able to have um, don't rely on it um, but it can help uh, as we're going along so we have students doing this all the time okay we talk to them first just to make sure that they are going to come back and they're not going to go dark on us um, because we don't want to lose you um, and we do lose a few which is which is which is uh, not not the best thing in the world but it's there it works and and it, we use it a lot um, so i uh, can't really say much more than that other than it's a fantastic facility to have Thank you um, for that, Tim. Um, Eric, if you feel comfortable to, do you mind discussing your timelines at the moment? Are you on track for 18 months? You don't have to answer the question if you're not comfortable. Oh, no, I am on track. <laughs> um, 
I, I, I actually did. I mean, at the point that uh, they discussed about uh, having challenges, um, <clears throat> I experienced it uh, probably in one or two, three courses of mine, the last sessions, at least three of them. Uh, and I was given a bit of time to really go and focus, and I did come through. Um, and that for me, it was it was great. It was really appreciated because I think it was I was going through personal things and personal challenges. And one of the things that was very good is because I would really shape up and really have a close discussion with my tutor to really get me through the bridge uh, to make sure that uh, I understand the concept and I understand the execution of what I need to do. Um, and it's very really, very really important that you really utilize your tutor. They will take you through everything. They will challenge you in terms of what you think, um, what you know, and but it's also for the best interest of you understanding and getting the marks that you really deserve. So um, it's very, very important that you utilize them. So for me, I'm on track um, and I'm working towards to finish. Uh, yes, and of, of course, there is many guys in our WhatsApp um, I see that there's a lot of people from uh, that wants to do engineering. So even though I'm in the, manage, in the business management group, I have a chat or probably a, a, a teams of, of WhatsApps of people that are in different courses that where we met um, and we are engaging. And, and thoroughly, it's just to understand from their side as engineering, as business management and other courses that are there, um, what is the experience? And what are the courses that are uh, that we are all going through and we're all rallying each other as a one union and one <laughs> committee and one group so that we can finish together so um i hope for the guys that are coming on board uh you'll meet new friends uh you'll meet new acquaintances you'll meet people that will really become your friends for them um and probably give you the jobs that you deserve and also just give you the journey and also take you through because I'm, I'm sure there's lots of challenges as being a student. Um, and luckily you're not doing it day to day, but you're also making an effort to make a, an hour of your time or probably a two hour of, of your time to really study and engage on your, on your, on your priorities to make sure that you are, you know, you're executing what you want. Um, it's all about the determination to be honest. Thank you. Amy, can I jump in on this on as well? Um, of course you can. Flexibility is one of those things we really pride ourselves on. And it can be from any industry. It's just not just military focused. It can be gas industry. It can be project management. It could be absolutely anything. If, if life throws complications at us, and we understand that not only is it difficult working and studying at the same time, if you have a life-changing event, that could be the passing of somebody. It could be that you've been thrown a fastball, like you've got a new project that's been moved forward and you need to focus on that. These are these ideal opportunities to utilize what we call an interruption. It's essentially a pause in study. The first thing you should understand is it does not cost you anything whatsoever. It's already factored into our program. Obviously, we've said you can complete in 18 months if you're on point. If you're slightly behind because you've had extensions, you can still complete within that two-year period. However, if something really happens in your life where you have to say, I have to stop for now, we just pause you. We'll bring you back at the exact same point that you've paused on, and it'll start ticking again from then. You can have up to two years. That's 730 days. However, we don't profess that you should take that all in one go, but it's there if you need it, all right? The, the idea is to attend to your personal life or matters that require you to deal with first and then look to come back to study. Our admin team are really hot on this. They'll give you a couple of options and they'll engage with you to see if it's the correct time for you to come back. If it is, you'll continue on programme as I said, with no extra cost whatsoever, and then join back in and study and work towards that lovely sort of final element of graduation. Thanks, Amy. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Tony. And just to ensure 100% clarification, um, it's 18 months per level. So it would take 18 months to do level four, 18 months for level five, 18 months for level six, um, just in case anyone thinks that they can do the full, full three levels um, in 18 months. 18 months is feasible for a level, though, 
if you don't have things going on, but we all do. A degree is a degree at the end. It doesn't matter if it takes you 18 months or 24 or the full four years. Um, so we've got a question here um, from Kobe um, from Israel. Brilliant to see coming through. Um, this is a little bit of a difficult um, one um, for us because you we're not quite sure what level of mechanical engineering you have studied, um, but I'll pass your question to Tony. Yeah, I think the ideal opportunity for you here is to send your CV into the web program and into the emails there. Uh, and then we can make a one-on-one -on -one assessment. So everyone who applies will go soon through the same process as well. So it's a case of, we'll have a look and see what level you've studied at. Obviously, the 20 years does count for something, but we are looking for that sort of level four and five qualification to then bump you up onto that level six. There are options we might be able to direct you towards, such as maybe a level of the foundation degree or maybe just professional body membership or something else. So I would always suggest send your CV and ask, and ask the question and then we can assist you a little bit further. Wonderful. Um, and then we've got just got a follow up um, question from Chris um, about which email to use. So um, Chris says, um, being a member of the MOD, if you could please um, email um, MPG, Military Programmes Group, um, at lincoln.ac.uk, um, our specialist um, administrator, um, Julie Morris, will be in touch with you. Um, and she's help, able to support things like um, LCAS, CANS, etc. Um, as well as in terms of the information we provide from the university. And um, that said, if you email ask um, wbdl at lincoln.ac.uk, we will reply as well. So as long as you email one of them, we will be back in touch. Um, an interesting question here from Sarah Jane about downloading um, the videos um, from being um, offshore or at sea. Um, I am not sure. Does anyone have an answer for this one? I know there is some ways. Um, what we would ask Sarah, if Sarah Jane, if do you mind dropping us an email and we'll look into this for you. Um, that said, if you can email and you've got enough connectivity to download, we are happy to answer any questions by email as well. Um, the program itself, the VLE if you were to join us, is set up. So we do have submariners as part of um, our student cohort. It does take preparation in that they um, download the materials that they require off the VLE. And some like to do that and to do some work while they're at sea. Others, it's not going to happen. The environment won't allow for it. They're going to be too busy. So they pause their studies and step back. Um, but if you drop us an email, we'll see if we can get these um, downloaded and sent across to you. Um, and if we can't the alternative. Hi, Emily. Can I jump in? Maybe uh, I want to you just understand. Um, so is she struggling to download uh, some content from, from the from the link or from the from from the portal that we utilize? I think one of one of the best things, right? And and, and this is something that I found out um, when I was using Blackboard, right? And I think let's just take maybe two steps back, um, look at ourselves from when we're in lockdown, right? Um, everything was disrupted in the way we are doing education today. So um, a lot of us were forced in really looking at how are we going to do education today? We needed to record. So what Lincoln has done has created a platform where it's like a repository. It's got a lot of information, how to approach the, the, the assignment, all those things you can do it at a go. Some of them, they even take you to a link on YouTube um and many of us as young people we've got uh cell phones instead of you looking at a video of somebody of a pop idol take maybe one uh of those uh megabytes use it and really download some useful content from from the blackboard and what's nice about this is that it's readily available at any point where when you are going to a restaurant and there's access to that connectivity log in using your details uh, securely because it's a two-way authentication you are able to retrieve that information get it into your into your la laptop or your cell phone and you can actually utilize it and really study um the the articles the information is really really critical and it's quite useful um and you can really use it for many many things that you can use 
and it really empower people around you to say i've taken something like this would you really want to do this and that learning experience that lincoln has offered to the students whether you are far or abroad um you get the same same experience as a person that's attending um into the campus thank you um for that eric um and just to um um, add a little bit there. Um, so, yeah, so once you are on program, um, you do have the option to download things. So it does take a little bit of um, pre-planning. Um, so it's that knowing um, if you're going to be, um, if you're not going to have access. In terms of the multi-factor authentication, um, for those who are not allowed phones uh, for any reason, um, then we do have an alternative as well. But again, you just need to make sure that you have that before, um, you know, as part of your prep in terms of joining the programme. Um, Tim, do you have um, any examples of your Navy students who have completed um, the programme? Um, yeah, quite a few, actually. Um, the Navy and the Air Force and, and the Army as well. Um, yeah. and. Uh, majority of them really enjoyed it and uh, um, went past their expectations um, and I've had some really good ones definitely down at uh, Cosford uh, where they really really do grasp the uh, the metal there we've had some fantastic uh, uh, stories from those guys down there but generally um, you know you, you if you're worried about this just think about it do a little bit of reading and just think I can do this because you can you can and, and we are there to help you and that's the most important part and i think amy um academic uh, lead would e echo that that this has been built around the, the the student not us we are the enablers it's about the students and that's the most important aspect of this and that's where we pride ourselves and you know and we, we haven't seen all the challenges yet there will be more challenges but i'm sure we'll be able to overcome overcome them so um, there's, there should be no issue whatsoever if you wanted to come to us. Uh, you would go through. We, t we talked about interruption, so you know all about that. But generally, it's a really, really good, solid model, uh, and, uh, and we're very proud of it. Lovely. Thank you, um, Tim. So we've got a question here this um, in two parts. Um, first, about group work, and then about time zone. So in terms of the group work, um, we do have optional um, group work at level six. It's optional in terms of it sits within um, one of our elective mod modules, which is coaching and mentoring. So if you'd like to take part in group work, then that is the module for you. If the idea fills you with dread, then you won't want to pick that one when you get to that stage. So a lot of things um, are informal. But what I would like to pick up um, is time zones. Obviously, we're designed to work, you know, to be, we're a global business school and we have our global accreditation. So I'd just like to pass um, to Fiona for how she works with her students at different time zones. And then I'll pass to Eric, who is in a different time zone, um, to just share his experience. Thank you. Yes. So, so yes, I've got um, learners from all sorts of different time zones. So some of the ways that we work together. So firstly, anything that we do where perhaps there's a live session scheduled, you know, like an online seminar, we try and pick a time which is hopefully going to work for the majority in the group, perhaps at 6 p.m., but we record it. Everything like that we do is recorded. So if I know somebody's in a different time zone, and they probably aren't going to be able to attend that, then we'll see if we can find a convenient time where I can then follow up and talk to them um, after they watch the recording for whatever focus that would be. With, with things like um, email and things like that, you know, of course, we have a return time. We have a, a you know, set time in which we will reply. But the, that means that if you are in a different time zone, you can post that question or comment at any point you like. We get it through our email and we can respond to you. Um, so we'll work as much as we can with you around the time zones. I've not come across any particular problems because usually if we do want to speak live, either using Teams or Blackboard or a phone call, we can find a, a mutually convenient time to be able to do that. And then you're able to access the materials as and when best suits you. So it actually tends to work out very well. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Um, Eric, how have you found the experience of um, being in a different time zone? Has it hindered you at all? I think uh, 
this is one of the best experience because it feels like uh, we are actually close to one another. And I think the, the time zone issue, it shouldn't be looked at as something that can be a, a negative, right? And looked at it as a positive. So what I say, um, the guys in London, they're just a, an hour ahead of me, so or behind me. So I always make sure if I was with my classmates or probably in the shop, uh, in, in, in the WhatsApp, we always arrange, if, if, if it was a group work or we had to do something on the blackboard, we always arrange something that is very convenient for everybody, depending on the time. I think the common time was always six o'clock for everybody, so we would be having that session. I think one of the best experience that I had was when we were doing the mentoring and coaching. Um, I had um, a person that was in UK that I was doing that. So, of course, I had to have that time where it was very much flexible. I'm residing in South Africa. I'm in Pretoria. So, every time when I knew my time was 5 o'clock, I knew it was 4 o'clock. So, we would set up the time that is much more approved, appropriate for all of us and make sure that we can really execute. But it was really fun. Um, and of course, group work is the, is the point. You, you become very uncomfortable because you don't know the person, but at the end of the day, you build a friend. So that's what I can really um, uh, 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 partake with you guys because that's a very, very good uh, thing to do. And I'll really encourage uh, every one of you guys to really reach out and make a friend with LinkedIn. You never know where it takes you. No, yes, that would be great, Tony. Right, thanks again. Um, yeah, we, we've had students all the way from um, Los Angeles based all the way through to Australia. And as Fiona's pointed out, the um, tutors will uh, uh, work around that, so to speak. So, for instance, early evening in Australia could be our mornings. So we we'll, we'll, could probably easily converse. So those, the distance in miles is not really an issue. Eric will probably support me in this in the fact that certain parts of Africa, especially South Africa, have outages and, and the sort of the internet will go off. And that could be sort of one of those areas where you think, oh, I'm not going to get to talk with my tutor. But we, we're aware of this. We know certain countries have sort of um, cut off points or the, there'll be an electricity shortage or whatever. And we'll work around those as well so we can easily sort of they're in something likewise for anything who's anyone who's military based as well we also know that you operate in different areas of the world as well and maybe internet connectivity is a little bit dodgy and maybe certain parts and so forth again we've got people who work on oil platforms as well it's like amy said it's all about preparation so if you're off store and then you come on school that's the time when you connect with your tutor. But if you just talk to us, let us know your situation. We'll understand the whole place a little bit better. Thanks, Amy. That's lovely. Thank you um, for adding that, Tony. Um, and of course, you know, if we have to arrange um, a one-to-one -one Teams call, of course we will do so. Um, you know, it's very much about developing that relationship with your tutor. This is um, a course where you are supervised through and it's education of equals. You are in work, you know what you're doing. We are working with you to support you and to, to supervise your learning. Um, we are not teaching you from above. So it's very much a collaborative um, process. So we've got a question um, about resources from Kobe here. Um, so we don't send out um, hard copy resources, but we do have a lot of um, ebooks, journals, and other um e-sources. I'd just like to pass over to Fiona because this is something that's explored in the first module at each level. So if you don't start at level four, don't you worry because you'll get the information again in module one at level five. If you don't do that one, you'll get it in module one at level six. So um, before I say too much, I'll just pass over to Fiona. Thank you so much. So really good news is we do not expect you to buy any resources. Um, if you are I noticed somebody said about meeting tutors and things. It's your university on campus as well as online. So if you were on campus and wanted to go in the library, of course you could. For the majority of our workplace learners, that's less likely. But when you um, are introduced within each level to the library website, there's very, very little that you won't be able to access um, electronically. The majority of the collection is electronic and it's really easy to find things. And a couple of particularly nice things is, first of all, 
we always have a reading list and it will tell you on every part of the reading list what resources are available online. Um, and that will be probably 80, 90% of that reading list. If you find something or you hear about something that you think, I'd really love to have a look at that, but the library doesn't seem to have it. We also have um, a fabulous system where you go on to the um, website, very easy to do, and you request that resource. And if the library can get it for you and as an electronic resource, they send you the link. Something that's particularly noteworthy is that's free and there is no limit to how many things you can request. So in terms of your learning resources, we, we, we supply you with everything you need and the different avenues that you can go to to find over and above those sort of more core traditional books. So there's nothing to worry about in that in that respect. And it's very easy for us to also um, help you find things that perhaps we don't have in the first instance. We can we can get that for you. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you um, for that, Fiona. So um, the comments have, have slowed down slightly. Um, so um, I would just like to um, thank um, all of you who have uh, contributed. It, without those comments, it would not be half as much fun. So thank you for your comments and questions. Um, obviously, thank you to the team here um, at Lincoln and, of course, Eric for joining us um, this evening. I really do appreciate it. It's always um, a joy. Um, so all I want to really say in summary is that we are here talking about degree programs, management degree programs. We have we start um, we offer opportunities for those with no higher education experience, all the way to those that have already completed their level fives um, or their level sixes. Um, they use the option of masters as well, which is a different department to our own, but we're always very happy to signpost people to where they want to go to fulfill their aspirations. So we have that foundation degree in operations management, which gives you the base of operations, that middle management requirement before you specialise and move to that strategic level. At that strategic level, we've got the engineering management, the business management, the logistics management and the human resource management. What we really do press, though, is we're very much about people, you know, communication is very much heart of what we do. If you have any questions, anything at all, um, just drop us an email and we'll be back in touch with you. Um, and if we don't know the answer, we'll let you know and we'll find it out um, because that's how we work. So, again, just thank you, everybody. And it was lovely to see you all. Thank you very much, everyone. All right.